Hello again. I wonder if anybody had ever asked themselves why some countries have flourished after gaining independence from Britain in the 1960s, while others have declined dramatically, and some just about get by. Take Jamaica and Singapore, for instance. Both are islands, although Singapore could more correctly be called, I suppose, an archipelago, it consists of many islands. Jamaica has about three million people living in the country, and Singapore perhaps five and a half million. Here are one or two facts about the countries. Singapore has no natural resources to speak of other than its people. Jamaica, on the other hand, has the world's largest reserves of bauxite, the ore from which aluminium is extracted. This is enormously important in the modern world and the United States buys most of its bauxite from Jamaica. Despite this, Jamaica just about gets by. There's a good deal of crime and violence in the country, although this does rise and ebb. To give one example, when Jamaica became independent from Britain in 1962, it had one of the world's lowest murder rates, around 3.9 per 100,000 inhabitants. By 2009, this had risen to 62 per 100,000 people, making it one of the highest murder rates in the world. This is curious and it might shed light on some of the things which we observe about crime in the British capital today. In Singapore the case was very different. Once independence was achieved, efforts were made to eradicate crime and this has largely been achieved. It is a very safe and law-abiding place. It's also a very rich place. Singapore has the highest percentage of millionaires of any nation on earth, including the Gulf states. One person in six in Singapore has more than a million US dollars in disposable wealth. Even the less wealthy are looked after by the state. Singapore's is, in many ways, one of the richest countries in the world. When we hear that countries like Jamaica are calling for Britain to give them lots of money, a figure of £7 billion has been suggested as reasonable compensation for Jamaica because of slavery. We have to bear in mind that Indians and Chinese also suffered conditions which were little short of slavery, being shipped off across the world as indentured labourers and so on. Has anybody wondered how come there were so many Indians in the Caribbean and in Kenya and Uganda and so on? These people do not ask for compensation, though. They simply get on in the world and make their own way. The African countries which were granted independence from Britain tended to decline, but India and countries with many Indians and Chinese in them usually rose. Why is it that India is now a nuclear power which sends spaceships to the moon and even to Mars? while places like Uganda are less advanced. Colonialism and the British Empire cannot be wholly to blame for the state of Africa and the Caribbean. If India and Singapore can thrive once free of the British Empire, what is it that hinders some other countries? Viewers will notice all the guilt which we feel for the British Empire is focused on black countries. We are never urged to feel guilty about Singapore, which was entirely a colonial creation of the British. How come the empire caused some countries to sink and others like Singapore to be fantastically rich? Of course, the most obvious difference is that countries with Chinese people and Indians seem to do well, and those with many people of African heritage, not so well. Is this something inherent, though, or is it associated with a different culture? If so, what produced that culture in the first place? Why should some ethnicities seem mad keen on books and others more enthusiastic about stabbing each other? These things don't emerge from a vacuum, I suppose. I don't have any definite answers about any of this, But when we see the supposed IQ rankings of different parts of the world, there does seem to be some kind of correlation 
with what we observe of the nature of those countries and those places in the world. It would be interesting to see some new research on this point, but I doubt anybody would fund a project like that these days. <laughs>